this is my baby plant right here this is a turnip green it looks like it it looks like they may have crossed it with a Chinese cabbage some traditional turnip green with the Chinese cabbage the way it's growing it's it's different than the other ones by a little bit and I really like this one a monster cabbage I mean a monster uh, turnip green huge leaves and they taste awesome even when they're this big which I can show you my hand in comparison here it's a pretty good size so I really like this one and I'm gonna try to save some seed as well See here with the bees that they're pollinating these turnip greens. And you can see the little seed pods on these flower stems as they grow taller are starting to form. And the reason why I move these pots out here is because of all the flowers growing on the trees. And all the pollinators going all over the place on these trees. So once the seeds form I'm going to move these pots back and uh, we'll continue to water them until the seeds develop further. But I sure do love me bees. They're awesome insect. Awesome. All right, I uh, pulled these out of the greenhouse and these were three big plants, turnip green plants, uh, that I'm attempting to save seed from and uh, you can see here that uh, this one here is a little bigger and that is the one that I the exact one I want to save seed from so I've, I'm going to collect to see that that's the next generation because this was from a hybrid turnip green or supposedly hybrid so I'm going to uh, it's not a rooting turnip it's a I mean a root turnip it's a green turnip it's made it's eaten for the greens but anyway I'm going to attempt to save the seed from it and uh, I'm also going to save the seed from these other two as a backup in case for some reason that plant is sterile. So that's what's going on with these. You can see here that the pods are starting to yellow some, starting to dry out some. You can even hear them rustling in this one. And uh, it won't be much longer these things will crumble and the seed will just fall out all over the place so I need to get uh, get ready for that and start clipping off the ones that are starting to dry off and putting them in a bag um, But the rest they need to be left on the plant till they get fully mature and crispy like these Then uh, from there we'll open the pot up and save the seed and I'll show you that when we get to that point There is the turnip green seed And I cut them all off kind of to fit the bag here and I'm gonna wait for them to completely dry some of them are dry, some of them are yellow, and uh, we're just going to let them dry out real nice and crispy, and then they'll just separate from the seed real easy, the husk will. Okay, here are the dried pods that I got from the turnip greens, those plants, and I'm going to put another bag over this, and then I'm just going to crush it, and all that's going to do is release all the seed from these brittle, dry uh, pods. Okay, the extra bag's on there, and that's just in case the first bag has a hole in it. And all I do is reach in here and just grab and squeeze and crunch and stick inside and manipulate it around like that. And all this seed, then I'll shake it. The seed will kind of work its way to the bottom because it's heavier. And uh, let me see if I can get in here and show you some of the seed that's falling. See it down in there? Oh, that is good seed. All I gotta do is separate these dry seed pods, otherwise known as chaff, from that seed there. Get to the very bottom, that's where the seed is. Really where the seed is. Okay, I put all of it, including the chaff, in here, other than what I had removed by hand, you know, as I was crunching it. And this is a higher sided Tupperware container. Well, it's probably not Tupperware. I don't want to be brand specific, but anyway, it's one of these plastic containers. And you can shake it like this, and that'll move the heavier seed to the bottom. At the same time, you blow like, like that. Turn it around. Blow. He's, it's blowing on me. But anyway. See how it's coming out? Get it and 
shake it up a little bit. All right, so you continue to do that until you have little to no chaff. Let me do that and I'll show you the finished product. Okay, I put it back on this plate so you can get an idea of how much seed that is. Can you see that? Here's my finger as a reference. I'll move it around so you kind of get an idea. That is a lot of seed. A lot of seed. So now I'm going to put it in the air-conditioned house and I'm, even though it's pretty dry, I'm going to leave it for a couple of weeks before I bag it up. Now you can get real finicky and pull every little piece of this stuff out. Um, I tend to get on the picky side so I'll probably grab a few more little pieces here. But anyway, that's basically ready and uh, we'll put her in, uh, we'll dry it out, put it up and uh, continue to grow some. Here's that very seed. Less than a week later. The purpose would come out here is for this plant right here. Um, last year I saved, I didn't, not last year, year before, I saved seeds from a broccoli. I thought it was going to be broccoli. But it obviously crossed, and I'm the only thing it could have crossed with that was also firing at the same time was kohlrabi. So I did a video on that. It's called Karaki. And um, what I did with these two beds last year was I planted out all the seed that I saved from the Karaki. I grew a, a few Karakis out, and these are the seeds. And, well, not a few, probably. I'd say... Well, these two beds were full, but then grass took over and this one survived this year, and then it went to seed. And this one had a really unusual flowering pattern, so I'm curious what this is going to do. Now, this, the pods are obviously pollinated. They're big and plump, but they're not yellowing. And when they get to the point where they're starting to yellow and get a little uh, crispy, then I'll take this plant and we'll save the seed from it, and we'll see what that uh, seed grows out to be. Always interested in these types of things, you know. This is that Koraki seed, which is a cross between the broccoli and kohlrabi. I called it Koraki anyway. But it's the same type of method. You can see the pods are the same. A brassica is a brassica. As far as I know, they're all done the same way. So I'm going to do the same thing with this seed. I'm going to put it in a double bag. I'm going to crunch it, remove it. Do all the same things I just did with the other, and I will have both uh, this seed and the uh, turnip green seeds. And here are the seeds from that broccoli, or karaki, whatever you want to call it. Come up within uh, like three days. That's another thing I wanted to kind of discuss. You don't have to wait for a long, long period if your seed is completely dried. Basically, it's ready to go into the ground right after it's dried and saved. But I try to wait about a week. I don't know, sometimes it seems to help if I have a little short waiting period. 